Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my Pipedrive training videos. In this video, I want to help you get started with Pipedrive by helping you to set up your pipelines and your pipeline stages correctly. This is actually one of the most common things I get asked about from new users when getting started is, when do you use multiple pipelines? How should you set the stages? What's the difference between stages and activities? So I'm gonna be getting into that in this video. Now, what you're actually going to see in this video is actually one of the lessons from my master pipe drive course, my paid course. And because setting up your pipeline correctly is such an important topic, I wanted to give you the answer and give you a sample of this course for free here on YouTube. Now, if you do want to learn more about the course, you can find details in the description uh, below this video. If you sign up to my master pipe drive program, not only do you get access to my course, you also get access to group calls that I run twice a week so I can, I can answer any questions that you have about pipe drive. You also get access to pre-built Zapier automation workflows to help you automate your sales process. I have a Slack community that provides great support and connection to me. You get the group coaching twice a week and options to book private sessions with me as well. But without further ado, let's get into this lesson from my Master Pipedrive program all about setting up your pipeline and stages in Pipedrive. Enjoy. Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to look at setting up your first pipeline in your Pipedrive account. Now, what a pipeline is, is it, it represents a sales workflow or the process that you have to go through to get a brand new lead who's just got in touch with you from uh, you know going through qualifying them, talking to them, pitching your service or product, whatever it is that you're selling, and then eventually closing the deal and winning and getting revenue and getting paid at some point in time. So a pipeline, this is what we're looking at on this deals tab up here. You can see all the different columns, all the different key milestones in that process. So actually you can see in this example I've created like a fairly generic, fairly straightforward pipeline that actually would work very well for lots of different types of businesses, maybe like an agency, any type of client facing business where you're maybe having a meeting and pitching your service. So you can see I've actually got a stage here for holding. This is maybe for deals that are on hold for now. I could kind of keep them here and move them out of my main stages. I'm just kind of deals that are on hold. Uh, but really I start with lead in. So this is where new leads will come. Maybe they fill out a form on my website or I create, I manually create a new deal up here. I could put them into that lead in column. These are people maybe I haven't even talked to yet. They're just brand new leads. I then have contact made. So these would be, if I move my deal, these would be people I've successfully talked to. Um, you know, I've made contact. Uh, and now my next stage is to try and book a meeting. So that's this th uh, kind of third, fourth stage over here. So I've then booked a meeting. We're gonna have a discussion and then I'll move them to needs defined. This would be where maybe I've completed that initial meeting and uh, I've defined, okay, this is what they need help with. I then get to proposal made or proposal sent where I've then sent them a proposal or a quote, whatever it is that I'm selling. And these are the people who are just now, I'm waiting for that response. They're, they're making that decision about whether to buy. And these are the people that I'm following up with. And then finally, maybe I get to the final stage, which is like contract sent. Uh, and so these are basically just the key milestones in the sales funnel. And what you would do is um, you can either drag them, moving them like this, or if I click on the deal itself, I can click up on this uh, pipeline up here to move it to the next stage. And I just want to clarify at this point, the deals are what go on the pipeline. So if you refer back to the last lesson where I talked about organizations, people and deals, deals, what we're looking at on this screen, these are all deals. The deal is linked with a contact or a person and a, an organization, but the deal is the actual uh, record in Pipedrive that we move through this system. And so we can see, you always know that you're on the deal page because you see this pipeline up here, all the stages. If I go to the contact, Elon Musk, there's no stages up here. The deal, this is what lives on the pipeline. This is where, this is what moves through those various stages. Now, a couple of tips with your pipeline. Some mistakes that I see people make all the time is they will often have a deal one column or even a deal lost column I've seen as well. Uh, generally, that's not advisable. Um, you actually have won and lost buttons up here. So when I win the deal, it's, it's really staying in contract sent and I'm just marking it as one to say, yep, I've now been paid. We realize that revenue or whatever that it says, $0, let's say that's $10,000. 
we now have received $10,000 worth of sales. And so when I mark it as one, it actually disappears from my pipeline. You see it's gone now. I can always reopen it. You can see if I click up there, I can reopen it and it now appears back on my pipeline. But that's why you don't actually need a stage for deal one. You actually just click that button. And it's the same with lost as well. Maybe I've only gotten to this stage needs to find and then I lose the sale for some reason. Uh, I can actually pick a reason up here and we'll look at this in a future lesson. I could just say the price was too high and I mark it as lost. And so now the pipeline goes red and again it disappears from my pipeline. Uh, if I reopen it, you can see there it is. Tesla Elon Musk is still there. So the pipeline that we're looking at here, it only shows deals that are open. In other words, deals that aren't won or lost. When you mark it as lost or as won, it completely disappears. So some tips for setting up your, pipe drive, uh, your pipeline correctly. It's, it's a really subtle little thing, but I do recommend phrasing your stages in the past tense. So if I actually edit my stages now, uh, what I often see people do is they say proposal. Now, it's not actually clear what that means. Are you writing the proposal or have you sent the proposal? So proposal sent or contract sent, meeting arranged, phrasing it in the past tense like that makes it very clear when to move it to the next stage. So I would only move it to this stage when the proposal has been sent. Whereas if it's just proposal, I don't really know should I move it in there when I'm preparing the proposal or if it's already been sent. So that's a subtle little thing you can do. You can see with all of these, they're all basically phrased in the past tense. So it's very clear when to put a deal into a particular stage. Now, the reason that's important is number one, just so that you have things in the correct place. But number two, when we get into reporting, one of my favorite reports is this one here, deal conversion. This actually tells us our overall conversion rate, but also where you lose people in the sales process. So imagine if you think back to what I just said, imagine that just said proposal. Well, I wouldn't really know, did these people receive a proposal or people I didn't get a proposal to, but it's too vague. So phrasing it again in the past tense means it's very clear, okay, this deal, this one, one deal here, or what percentage is that, 17% are lost when they received a proposal. It's very clear this report now makes a lot more sense. So that's something you should be aware of and just my, my advice is phrase your stages in the past tense. To give you another example of a different pipeline, um, I have this other one here called mortgage pipeline. So you can see I've just set it up slightly differently for like a mortgage lending type business. Um, if you don't know anything about mortgages, don't worry. But this is just another example. So you've got like a new lead, lead qualified, interview complete. Again, I'm phrasing everything in the past tense. Uh, documents received, submitted to lender, lending approved and settlement. So basically the stages of your pipeline represent the major milestones that you need to get through to uh, complete a sale. Now what I would say is you should try and fit your sales process onto one pipeline. I have seen people get into issues where they have multiple pipelines. Some people will even have like a qualifying pipeline, a sales pipeline, and then like a, a follow-up pipeline and they move them between all these different pipelines. Um, you're going to run into issues if you do that. Take my advice, condense your stages down to have it all on one pipeline, something like this. So it does mean finding a bit of balance. You don't want to be too detailed. I actually was working with a client uh, just recently and he had about four different pipelines and he had far too many stages where he was saying, call number one complete, follow up, call number two complete, follow up, call number three complete. And then it was like, send document, follow up on document, and he just had way too much detail on his pipeline. So, fit everything onto one pipeline, have the stages be the major milestones that you need to complete, and what we'll look at in a future lesson is using activities to represent things like phone calls, submitting documents. The activities are the things that you actually need to do to get the deal to the next stage in the pipeline. So if I have a deal in uh, interview complete, my activity might be to send an email to request documents. Or if I am in lead qualified, it would be to have a phone call to book the interview or to complete the interview, that kind of thing. So just to recap that one more time, the stages, these headings that you see here should be the major milestones. Activities, which we will look at, uh, represent the actual things that you need to do to get the deal to the next stage. Now, why would you need multiple pipelines then? Because you see up here, you can create multiple. 
I've got this sales pipeline, I've got the mortgage pipeline. Um, and again, this would be a very, this is a common issue I see among new users is they create too many pipelines. Really, the only case to have multiple pipelines is if your business sells, uh, has different types of sales process. Not even if you have different products or service, you can actually sell different products and service within one pipeline. And what we will again look at in a future lesson is using products. So even though I might have multiple products in here like website design, app design, and SEO, even though I have multiple things that I'm selling, I would still have that all on one pipeline because the, the process for selling those is the same. It doesn't matter what I'm selling, I still need to have a meeting, we need to define their needs and send a proposal. Whether it's whatever I'm selling for those products, it's the same process. So I'm gonna do them all on one pipeline. You would have a different pipeline if you're selling something and the process is quite different. So in my business, I sell consulting services and the stages are similar to this, but I also sell sponsorships for my podcast and videos and things like that. And the process of selling sponsorship is a little bit different. The stages are different. So that's an example where it's like a pretty different revenue stream. It's a different selling process. That's where I would have a different um, sales pipeline. Now, some users that I've worked with will have different pipelines for maybe different regions or different sales teams. Now, actually, Pipedrive does have a Teams feature for people on the uh, professional plan and higher. You can actually set up teams to group together the salespeople in your account. So that's actually a really useful way to avoid having multiple pipelines. Um, if you are, if you don't have the professional plan, you may choose to have multiple pipelines for different teams. You may have like team A or the California region be one pipeline or team B or a different region like the New York region be a completely different pipeline. So for reporting purposes, you can track the two different regions or two different teams separately. On the top right hand side up here, I have the view options and I can actually change what I'm looking at on this pipeline. So here I am just in my sales pipeline. I'm just looking at all deals right now. If I click in here, I can change which sales rep I want to look at. So each rep has their own pipeline. I mean, I'm, I'm actually the only user in here and all of these deals, if I click on one, you can see the owner is me, I'm up here. If I have another sales representative in here, I can change the ownership to that person. So what this means is as a manager, or the owner of the company, you can look at everyone, you can just look at every single deal in your company's pipeline right now. Or if you want to drill down to a specific sales rep, you can you can choose the rep in here to look at. So we can look at just Paul's deals. And that's probably what I would use as the rep. I would look at just my deals on a daily basis. I don't want to be distracted by anyone else. So I would just look at those with my name on it. There are also filters, which again, we'll look at in a future lesson. So if I want to, I've got loads of deals in here, maybe I only want to look at the deals for a certain product. What I could do is create a filter and say attached product is maybe app design. And so I can save that and it will filter and show me only the deals that have app design attached to it. So using the, the view options up here, I can filter and narrow down my pipeline to just the sales rep I want, or using filters, just the deals that I'm looking for based on whatever criteria that I select. So let me conclude this lesson by saying this. With pipelines, do not go overboard. Again, common mistakes that I see people make is setting up too many pipelines or using too many stages in their pipelines. You wanna keep it fairly high level, have the stages be the big milestones that you need to complete. And if you find yourself needing multiple pipelines, just check first, you can reach out to me in the comments or on Slack, um, check that you're not setting up too many because chances are you can use a filter to, in a sense, create multiple pipelines by filtering down the one pipeline. You really only need multiple if you're having, if you have multiple regions or teams and you're not on the professional plan or completely different sales processes for different revenue streams within your business. So from here, if you haven't already, if you're brand new to Pipedrive, go ahead and start setting up your stages now. Or if you're already on Pipedrive and you're um, looking to clean up these, uh, your pipeline, you can start to rearrange the stages, phrase everything in the past tense like I have shown you, and maybe consolidate things down if you have created too many pipelines. Um, if you are consolidating and cleaning up your account, you, you can um, move the deals to different pipelines up here. So you can change the pipeline, you can change the stage, and so you can move all those deals to the new pipeline that you're setting up uh, if you already are, if you're going through that cleanup process. 
good luck and I will see you in the next lesson.